welcome friends and fans of the podcast. This is Artie Astor coming to you from my studio in Orlando, Florida. Be sharp and see. I want to start off today's episode talking about baseball. Do you guys remember back in 2008, the new pitcher for the Tampa Bay Rays, his name was Buck Stevenson? This guy was, he came out of the minors throwing a fastball at 110 miles per hour. This guy was scary. Let me, I, I, I want to start this episode by talking about Buck Stevenson. They called him good old Bucko. Why do I want to talk about Bucko from the Tampa Bay Rays? This guy comes out of the minor league throwing 110 miles per hour. I mean, you can't go wrong drafting a guy that does that. His first pitch in the major leagues kills a man. Hit the man in the face, ruptured an artery going to his brain. He died an hour later in the hospital. Now, the game was postponed. They actually literally canceled the game that day. And um, Buck Stevenson's next game, he had a little bit more statistics going in his favor. He struck out 15 batters. So he comes out of nowhere, strikes out 15 batters. That's amazing. What else did he do in that game? So game two, because game one, he murdered someone, so that doesn't count. Game two, he strikes out 15 batters, but he walked 19 He walked 19 batters and broke the elbow of another batter. They ended up losing that game 17 to two. So what else is good old Bucko good for? What else did Buck Stevenson do in the major leagues? The next game after that, he struck out 11 batters, but he walked a whopping 22 batters. He put two of them in the hospital with bruised ribs. The game after that, he broke the world record for speed with a fastball, 112 miles per hour straight into the knee of Derek Jeter. Jeter was out the rest of the season. He couldn't play. He had to have reconstructive surgery on his face. It was only later that they discovered the doctor had the wrong x-rays. Long story short, he ended the season with a whopping 514 strikeouts. That's right, he beat Matt Kilroy's record. Absolutely amazing. Not only did he break a lot of records and bones, but he broke some records that aren't so, I don't know, glorious. He ended the season with 700 walks, 200 hit batters, and a record of 0 in 19. He was the fastest pitcher to ever live. But was he good? No. Not only was he not good, but he also does not exist. I made him up. And anyone who knows baseball probably figured it out as soon as I said 110 miles per hour. Right? But what's the point? Why do I start a podcast episode about music talking about some fictional guy named Buck Stevenson who can throw a baseball like it's a stinking satellite out in space? I think we know the answer to that. Speed does not equal good. Ever in life. Ever. Speed does not equal good. Ever. Unless you know how to control it. That, my friend, works exactly like that for music. Think about it. Let's let's just go back to speed in general, okay? You have a horse, the Seattle Blue, okay? Runs 80 miles per hour. Good for him. But what if the horse is an idiot hopped up on sugar cubes? He ain't going nowhere. You know, he's going to be running figure eights around that, around that track. You can drive 300 miles per hour around the Indy 500, and that's great. If you can't pass a guy in tight space on a curve, you're not going to win. You ever, you ever notice something about fastball pitchers in, in the uh, major leagues? Even the best fastball pitchers have something that's off speed. They're not always throwing heat because they have to know how to control the speed, when to use the speed, unless, of course, you're 
the best closer in Major League's history, Mariano Rivera, who only had one pitch but still is just absolutely amazing. But th- um, that's beside the point. If you're only, only fast, you'll crash and you will burn. You need to know how to control your speed. And this is so very important in the world of music. It really is. I have a challenge for you. Seriously. I, and, and I want you to accept this challenge and not, not let the name Jimmy Page like make you go, oh, oh my God, it's Jimmy Page. He could do no wrong. Didn't he walk on water once in, in Woodstock? No, just like, hold off a second, okay? Go to the 1973 Madison Square Garden live concert of Led Zeppelin. It's awesome. Okay, I, I, I need to start off by saying it's just awesome. It's Robert Plant and Jimmy Page. I don't, and I know their drummer was good. I, I, they don't even need a drummer or a bassist at this point. You can literally have Robert Plant and, and Jimmy Page up on the stage, just the two of them entertaining a crowd of 20,000. Like, you really can. I'm not even exaggerating. Like, people would pay to see that. They would. They could sell out a state if they did it now, as a, at a hundred years old. Just the two of them, Page and Plant only. They would probably sell out Wembley Stadium for crying out loud. Why do I mention this? I need you to go to this concert, YouTube it, 1973, Madison Square Garden. One of my favorite rock bands, Led Zeppelin. Listen to Jimmy Page play the guitar in this concert, and and you tell me. Did he get his hand, his fretting hand, stuck in the garbage disposal the night before the concert? Now, I love Jimmy Page. I love the innovative songwriting, and I love his guitar playing. But when he decided, hey, I'm Jimmy Page, I'm lightning fast, he sounded kind of, what did Eddie Van Halen say about him back in the 70s? He sounds like a two-year-old with a broken hand. That's the actual description from Eddie Van Halen's mouth. Jimmy Page is a legend. He, he has written so many guitar solos that just blow me away. I love the guy. He thought he was faster than he was. And because the band was good, because he was good, they were ridiculously famous. Ask any guitar virtuoso, is Jimmy Page a guitar virtuoso? And watch their eyes after you ask them. Because if they say yes, they're going to have to lie. And they're more than likely going to give away their tell. Right? Another thing a guitar player or any musician needs to know is where they fit. Where they fit in the band. Where they fit, period. And they need to understand their limitations. Because we all have them. I don't care who you are. We're all people. Yes, Buckethead has limitations. Go uh, go watch the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction concert. 1995, you had Neil Young, Robert Plant, and Jimmy Page. The three legends all on the stage together. This song is essentially a parody of itself. I forget what song it is. What the heck song was it? I forget the name of the song. But at about five minutes, just do like um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductions, 1995, Neil Young, Jimmy Page. And this song will come up. At about five minutes and 38 seconds into the song, Neil Young actually begins to think he is Jimmy Page. It takes about 30 full seconds to realize that he's not. He ends up going outside of what he's able to do. He is not that kind of player. Heck, neither is Jimmy Page. He's a legend. He's a legend. Oh yeah, Neil Young in his songwriting style, his voice. I can listen to his music and I even like the B-sides of Neil Young stuff. I can listen to Neil Young all day. The guy is awesome. I don't know why when he got up on that stage with his guitar, he began to think his name was Neil Hendricks. And he started to try to do these crazy solos. And there are people out there who say, Oh my God, this is so good. I mean, it's Neil Young. Uh, Just repeating his name over and over doesn't make him a good guitar player. 
and he actually is a good guitar player, but he's not a virtuoso. In fact, I actually get irritated when I watch concerts of him live and he begins to run him on the stage soloing. He doesn't use a lot of tremolo. I mean, he uses the whammy bar, the tremolo bar, uh, but he doesn't bend a lot. He doesn't use tremolo with his fretting hand. He doesn't slide. It's like a lot of straight notes. Um, good note choice until it's not. You know, Neil Young is a master guitar writer. I mean, I'm sorry. Let me say that again. Neil Young is a master songwriter. And he played excellent guitar. He played piano, harmonica. I just believe that he was very emotional. And he displayed that on stage. Nothing wrong with that. But yes, the 1995 concert with Jimmy Page. It was the rock and roll induction to the Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm sorry, to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It looked like he was trying to rip the strings off of the guitar. But let me ask you a question. When in life, and I want you to really reflect about this because it's deep. It's not, it's not your basic superficial crap. When in life is only speed important and make you the best? Think about that. I'm going to allow some silence. When in life is only speed a benefit? Only. Only speed. I can think of an example, actually. And here I am talking about how speed is not the best. But Usain Bolt, right? The guy runs faster than a diving peregrine falcon. But now ask yourself, okay, the guy's lightning fast. And all he has to do is be fast, right? But how popular is track and field? Really stop and think about it. When you compare the 100-meter dash to the NFL, baseball, basketball, hockey, is it really, does it really compare? No. And don't try to think of some way to twist the truth to say yes. It doesn't compare at all. Running fast in a straight line is not really something that's admired by the masses. But now if you're a running back and you grab that football from that quarterback's hands and you break four tackles and you run 40 yards and dive into the end zone over the back of a defender, well, then you're a superstar. If you can run a route, lose the defender, dive and catch a touchdown pass with one arm in the end zone, well, then you're a superstar. But if you run a straight line and don't turn around to catch the ball or don't know what you're doing or run straight into a wall, then you're an idiot. Being fast alone gives you nothing. If you can steal 130 bases in a season, look at Randy, Ricky Henderson's a perfect example. From what I can remember, and I did do research on it, he was not the fastest man in the major leagues when he broke all those records. There were plenty of people faster than him. He knew how to use his speed. Therefore, Ricky Henderson, to this day, is probably still the best base stealer of all time. Not the fastest in the major leagues, but he can steal 130 bases in a season. So you see the pattern here? Using speed the right way is what makes you, quote unquote, good. This is one reason why I think Steve Vai is one of the best technical guitarists out there. He can, Steve Vai can be lightning fast, like frighteningly fast. But he, if you ever watch him play, he's not only fast. He uses his speed sparingly, and he inserts it at the right time. And he also doesn't try to go faster than he's able to, because he realizes that's actually not musical. You know, when you try to go faster than you're able to, you leave the realm of musicality. It never really works. If you're a race car driver and you push the car beyond its limits and abilities, what happens? You're either going to crash or the car is going to stop working. Athletes who try to do more than they're actually able to do get injured. Understanding your limitations is wise and appreciated in any realm, especially in the realm of music baby yes go to Google type in world's best guitarists you'll get a list of people who are not fast at all 
even a list of people who thought they were fast and who were wrong, right? And many others who are on the list and no one knows why, but they were legends, right? I think Neil Young is in the top 100, which is surprising to me because he's really not. Um, but isn't it subjective? Isn't art subjective? Jimi Hendrix, stop and think about it. One of the most expressive and innovative guitar players who ever lived. But there were times where Jimi Hendrix thought he could play 64th notes at 200 BPM for five minutes straight. And it showed. He actually comes across sloppy. In fact, both Jimmys, Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix, they were the same in that way. They both write great, they, uh, they both wrote great stuff. They're both legends. Both great guitarists. I'm actually admitting they're great guitarists. But they both thought they could play faster than they could, and it showed. Does that make them bad? No. Does that make them good? No. It's subjective. But there's a reason why someone like David Gilmore and Mark Knopfler, there's a reason why they're on that list. Now, David Gilmore is like half the speed of anyone on that list. He's really not a fast guitar player, and ask him. He'll tell you. He doesn't hide it, but listen to his solos. Every note in and of themselves is a statement. Every riff is played on purpose, and it's meant to make your hair stand on end. And I'm not saying he's better than someone who plays fast. Let's establish that right now. Good, bad, better, worse. It's all subjective. I, I remember I was living in Tewksbury, Massachusetts in my early 20s, late teens. I was torn to shreds because I said... Jimmy Page was the best hack guitarist in the world. And people were like, how could you say that? It's, it's Jimmy Page. I'm like, okay, you could put a guitar in Sean Connery's hands and then say, oh, how could you say he's not a good guitar player? It's Sean Connery. It, uh, saying his name out loud doesn't make him good at what you think he is. Fame doesn't have anything to do with skill. Okay, I think... <laughs> Just about to start mentioning names, but I think that I think we can establish that now. You can be ridiculously famous and not even be good at your craft, and and, that, and it happens. It happens. All right, and we all know that it happens. So saying it's Jimmy Page, how could you say that? It doesn't really do anything. And you know, I, I watch him live. I mean, I've been watching him live forever. I love his music. Um, he just decides I'm going to allow the next three minutes to be this emotional expression of whatever. And he just, like Neil Young, makes up for the inaccuracies with theatrics and raw visual emotion. There's nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't make them good if they try to play fast. If notes, and I quote unquote notes, are being hit at a fast speed, they still have to be musical. You know, I like when speed is used in, in music. But I, I, me personally, Artie Aster, okay, I can watch George Benson and be like, wow, that dude is awesome. How does he do it? But Artie Aster prefers Mark Knopfler of the 80s. Why? Because he was fast. He did use speed, but not all the time. He used it every now and then to show that he was capable and because it's fun. But he used good note placement and good melodies as his weapon of choice. Good? Bad? Hmm, there really isn't right or wrong. One thing I will say that's right or wrong, okay, if you want to get technical, when anyone, and I don't care who they are, when anyone tries to play faster than they're capable, they will play incorrect notes. They'll have incorrect note placement, incorrect sounds. They'll actually have notes that don't sound out because their finger is, like, not placed correctly in between the frets and they're not pressing down as hard as they should and it sounds like a ghost note and that's not what they intended. There might even be times that their timing is way off, whatever the case may be. Those are mistakes. They're mistakes. Folks, let's just admit it. They're mistakes. Watch it. Listen to this Jimmy Page. Listen to Led Zeppelin, 1973. The amount of mistakes Jimmy Page makes is literally innumerable. It doesn't matter. It's still a good stinking concert. However, mistakes aren't the end of the world. Do you know how many mistakes are allowed to go into the studio version of a song? There's literally people burping in the background. There's, in, in studio songs now, studio releases, people accidentally sitting on a keyboard. 
people accidentally kicking a guitar, people turning up the echo when they weren't supposed to, and because they said, hey, this actually doesn't sound that bad, they let it stay. The raw, organic sound of music is real, and I believe it's making a comeback. Now, I can listen to Stairway to Heaven a million times. I love the acoustic guitar in the beginning. I love the guitar solo. In fact, I will come right out and say it is my favorite Jimmy Page guitar solo and one of the best of all time. It's a legendary solo. And no one plays it quite like Jimmy Page. I've heard a million people do a cover of it. Jimmy Page nailed it. It's a legendary solo who no one plays quite like him. How I view him as a guitarist is not how I view him as a musician. I'll say that again. How I view Jimmy Page as a guitarist is not how I view him as a musician. He is a legend. And if you want to say he's a guitar virtuoso, go ahead. I'm not going to say that. Not while people like Eric Johnson and Jeff Beck are alive. But guess what? Ask Jeff Beck to play the solo to Stairway to Heaven. See how it sounds. His approach to the same instrument is so totally different than that of Jimmy Page. In fact, now that I think of it, I'd like to hear Jeff Beck play that solo <laughs> with his style. It'll be kind of cool. Anyways, okay, I don't want to get sidetracked here. You know, I was thinking about this episode a lot. And if I should make uh, this huge list of who's a good guitar player, who's fast and who's not. Um, but the analogies I gave, the examples I gave should be enough to make the point. Being fast does not make you good. No more than being slow makes you bad. After all... There really isn't anything more subjective in this world than art, right? I don't know. You tell me. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. And once again, this is Artie from your favorite music podcast, B Sharp and C. This week, we should B Sharp and C that fast does not necessarily mean good. Thanks again, everyone, for listening. Please enjoy my song, Turned Around Lately, with a special guest singer from Italy. Her name is Charlotte Cardinale. I have, she was my first B Sharp and C episode I ever did, and I had the immense pleasure of working with her on this song. So please enjoy Turned Around Lately. Written by me and performed by the only, Italy's own, Charlotte Cardinale. about everything so wrong in this life of mine and I run from just about everyone To know who I am Don't you see I can judge you So could you please Stay away From what I do I've turned around lately Oh, and I've been down And now you hate me. I've turned around lately, oh, and I have found this slave thing,
then you give her up to the gallows with a quiver of broken arrows Please. 